And hello, and we are back somehow for our fourth instalment of Talking Country. So this is season one, episode four, and I've now well and truly become Americanized saying it's season rather than series. This is season. kind of what it's done yeah. to me. Um, so obviously, hi, I'm Jamie, and I'm joined by my counterpart from, you know, this side of the Atlantic, uh, Lauren McKinnon, who's with me once again. And Patty is back second week in a row and we decided that you know after two weeks of having brits come in to outrun her really that she <laughs> needed a friend from over over her side so who we got with us today babe oh uh, we have really a very very special american <laughs> thank you for joining me uh, at least i feel like i have reinforcements this time i'm not completely <laughs> outnumbered yeah uh, I got you. We have, and we'd like to welcome the very lovely and talented Allie Colleen. And if you, you do not know Allie Colleen, let me just give you a brief rundown so that we all are familiar. Uh, Allie Colleen is a uh, Oklahoma native, lovely Oklahoma, right in the middle of America. Uh, and she now currently lives in Nashville. Uh, she's a 2018 Belmont University graduate. So. Congratulations for that. Thank you very much. It's always good to have an education, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, she comes from a musical family, you might say. Um, some people know, some people don't. Um, but we're going to leave it up to her if she wants to maybe mention and elaborate on that. But the most important factor here is that Allie Colleen is her own, believe me, this, this girl is a badass and she is really good she's a great writer she's got her own style and she's carving her own path um, as far as her career goes and you know i i can't say enough i mean thank you I so much single out thank you it's called ain't the only hell my mama raised mm -hmm. and i can't wait to actually hear what the background to that song is um because it's pretty cool it's really cool so uh, welcome Allie. Thank you, thank you. How thank are you today? I'm doing so good. I'm That's good. great to hear. Uh, just tell us really quickly about the background to that new single. I, w I would love to. So um, Ain't the Only Hell um, came from just this special photograph of my mom. So the whole first verse of Ain't the Only Hell just talks about just looking at this photograph of my mama um, in just a swimsuit on a lawnmower, just doing her thing. And she was just gorgeous. And um, for the first time I saw my mama as who she was before she became a mom, you know? And I'd, I'd literally never thought about that before. And I, I was like, she's my mom. Like, honestly, I'm the, I'm the biggest blessing in her life. Cool, like she's my mom, like she's a mom. But no, right. like moms are so cool. They just, they just take on the mom thing, right? Whenever it happens, planned or not, it just happens. So the song is all about what happened before that, you know, like who my mom was, this hell raising woman who is crazy and wild and grew up in Oklahoma. Um, and the core, and you know, that kind of thing. And, and I got to have a lot of really cool conversations about my mama, like with her about what she did when she was my age and, um, when she would sneak out and like what she got in trouble for. And, um, all these things and it was so special but then it's also a little tongue-in-cheek because that chorus hits and it's like I can, you can't expect me to learn from something that I've never tried because everything that my mom did in high school she would not let me do ever <laughs> you know and so it's a little tongue-in-cheek in that sense too that it just pays so much respect to moms and who they are and what they've done and who they were before moms but it also has that little tongue-in-cheek side of like I'm the woman I am because of the woman that you were I have two amazing moms that are crazy, amazing women that have just accomplished so many things and so many different things and on their own and just doing the whole amazing badass woman thing. And, and because I got to grow up and see them do that, that's what I do every day, you know? And so a hundred percent just pays respect to moms and it's really cool. It's fun. Uh, one of my, one of my best friends here in Nashville produced it. So getting to work with somebody who was such a close friend um, it's just brilliant. made me feel that much more me. It was cool. As a mom of a daughter that's now grown, I can so relate completely, and I absolutely <laughs> adore it. So thank you. 
Thank you. And I, I, you that, that, I, I yeah. heard you were uh, I heard you were out the other night. So, but Jamie will take on that in, in just the next minute or so. She was jumping ahead of me, so <laughs> I, I was just going to say, like, you know, I, I had to jump a little bit. Well, that was, <laughs> it's always good to jump, but like, you know, when I, you know, first got that sent over and stuff, it was, it was great to listen to. I love how you've got so much going on with the track, and like you said about the production, you know, it's it's really really cool. To, like, there there is a lot there that you're it's so of, much, yeah, yeah, that you're kind of bringing in, and you know, we'll kind of draw nicely into what Patty was saying. It's like, over here, we can't quite see our mums yet for a lot of us. Um, we've had news today that we are moving from stage four down to stage three. Which, I don't think that's how that's supposed to work. Which currently doesn't actually mean anything. Yeah. Um, so earlier this week, as we talked about last week, we've had all our non-essential retail shops open, which basically means that Croydon Town Centre has a queue outside of Primark that goes <laughs> all the way down the high street, which in the middle of our high street, we have a Greg's that has just reopened that has an equally as big a queue going across the high street. <laughs> uh, Greg's, for kind of our Americans, is a, it's a pastry shop. Um, which is very, very good first thing in the morning if you've had a very oh, heavy it's night. It's a bacon sandwich. <laughs> it's probably just really good. good in the middle of the night if it's open as it would be in the morning. Yeah. Um, so obviously we're, we're kind of moving a little bit slower than things are over there. And we're very much fingers crossed that we're going to be able to celebrate July the 4th a lot bigger than you guys will this year, because that seems to be the day when the government are talking about opening pubs again. Yay! However... We're all celebrating! However, well, obviously I know, I know Patty is, but it sounds like two of you had a night out earlier this week. Yeah, tell us about it. Well, we, we did, but we, I didn't know that Allie was out or I would have uh, obviously <laughs> stopped and said, hey, um, but that's kind of how the night it was, wasn't it, Allie? It was like, there was a lot of people, but it wasn't, did you find it to be scary at all? No, not all, um, but to, um, to be honest, um, a lot of us musicians back in February were really, really sick. Yeah. You know? And a lot of us share, we, all share microphones. we all share microphones. I mean, yeah, a lot of just industry workers were, and, and, and a lot of people didn't know, you know, about COVID at the time. And so if you got diagnosed with way worse than bronchitis, but it's not pneumonia and it's not the flu, you know, you really run that high chance of having it. So to be honest, a lot of us here in Nashville, the wave already hit. And I think that's why our numbers weren't so crazy because there's so many that's unaccounted for. But I mean, my brain doesn't know anything about COVID more than what I've read on media, which is all contradictory things. So all I know is Jamie, my fingers are crossed for you guys that you guys get to open up July 4th and party with us over here and just celebrate getting to be together. Um, I truly believe that you should take all the precautions you need to if, if you have a compromised immune system. I think like when that's what the lines are for you, you should do whatever you need to do. I mean, my mom's um, a cancer survivor. And so I was, I was really careful. I went home and didn't even see her when it was really bad. And when I went home, my grandparents would sit on their sun porch and we would sit a good, you know, 60, 80 yards out into the, the yard and I'd play with my nieces just so our grandparents could watch it. So I do think there's really smart things to do depending on who you're going to be around. But I have had a blast every night of the week I've gone down so far this week had a blast I hugged people I loved on people I asked them if I could and they said yeah so I did you know I mean that, I felt that must really be kind of the biggest thing like I I sort of noticed with Americans that come over you know people that come over from Nashville and stuff like you know we we do hug over here but some people are a little bit kind of warier than kind of you guys are Whereas like, no, Nashville, we're not worried about that at all. As if, if you're not a hugger, <laughs> you don't fit in in Music City. Because it is generally, it's like people are like, well, I don't care if you're not, I'm going to hug you anyway. It is, it's, and it's, but then it's the opposite because um, I got to do two study abroads, one in London and one in Ireland. And like, I have a lot of friends here 
that I have been friends with for years and I've never been to their house. And y'all will invite me over the minute you meet me. You know, like everyone I feel like joins in homes and, and, yeah. you know, and that's what's different from over here. So I feel like there's, there's both kind of situations in that sense. And I mean, I'm totally a hugger, but I've also been asking people and I've been rejected a couple of times and it's awkward. You're just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, yeah. Nice to meet you. I just pull out a bunch of weird hand signs. You don't know what to do. <laughs> and it's like, okay. Yeah. yeah that what happened, what happened and, and, um, the other night where we were both at the same place and did not run into each other, um, awkwardly as that is, as we're sitting here talking on a computer in the same town, right. weird. Um, right. But uh, the local in Nashville, uh, a bar here in Nashville, um, has a weekly songwriter round called The Freak Show, which has been going on for a long time in different venues as, you know, one venue would open and close and then it would move to another. And it's been around forever and it's really launched some careers of some notable people. Um, and it's a great, great round. Um, I encourage anybody to go to it. Um, it they, they draw some great talent and some, some really, really... Um, the great songwriters attend it because it's it's just such a good good show um that freak show had this week dropped some not so very subtle hints of who one of their surprise guests might be um if you're a fan of uh a certain miss ashley mcbride uh you probably kind of got the hints and yeah. so it was pretty well attended ended this week and uh, miss ashley mcbride was there as expected we, um, up, we showed up at capacity and nobody would let us in for a while and oh really wow uh -huh. actually ashley actually was actually like ally like like what are you doing i was like i don't know i'm just sitting on the street I'm like, outside like, the fence I don't see you. That, that just kind of shows the effects of covid because that would have been it's like the ultimate it's like do you not know who i am and it's like you know <laughs> Yeah, no, they were like, we're at capacity, and then finally Ashley was like, Allie, come in, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know, I'm just, I know at some point I'm gonna get to hear you sing, whether it's from a curbside or in the building, and I'm blown away about it. I love her. I know, she's just so awesome. I but cried that's, uh, that's what we were doing, and, and not to mention, I mean, not just Ashley, but I mean, you know, Ava Page, who, um, you know, we know she's been fighting leukemia for a long time, she was there, and she sounded astounding. I mean, the, the girl is just really great for her age. It terrifies me every time she goes out in public, though. Yeah, it, I'm it is. Next I'm like, sweetheart, what are you doing? But also, like, I couldn't imagine having to stay home all the time. I love Miss Ava. I, I just went right with her today, and um, she was really good to see out. Uh, and and her and I played. She's been doing those neighborhood rounds. Yeah. Uh, hosting those neighborhood rounds so I got to go and do that with her last week I saw something on like on Facebook actually like at the back end of the no, they're week. just they're hiring like sound equipment people to come and just set up in random cul-de-sacs of their neighborhood yeah and all of the houses come out and we'd all say I mean like if you come with your group you know you'll sit on a blanket with them or whatever but everyone was really spread out um and we were really far from everybody singing wise and we made sure like Ava kind of had her space and it was really cool I mean the way that Nashville will find ways to keep playing music is, has been yeah, especially definitely. a part of. And do you feel, Ali, that like even though the current situation has meant that so much live music has had to be delayed or gone hold, it's probably brought, brought you new opportunities and new audiences and people who wouldn't have otherwise been able to see you, right? Absolutely. Um, and honestly, going back to Ain't the Only Hell and what Jamie was talking about with the production, we recorded that song in quarantine. And so wow. for the first time in my life, I have never met almost anybody who played on that song and so Jamie when we would just when we would just fly tracks to people's houses to their home studios so they could play it and send it back they would just naturally hear things that they wanted to like put their own inflections into and so when we send it to the guy to sing background vocals he sent us back so many different versions of background vocals but then he also sent us a banjo track because he played banjo and he goes I just kind of heard this little part that seemed cool and you can obviously use it if you want to or not you know like whatever and so all those different track layers that you heard Jamie that just kind of caught your ear it's like yeah. none of those things were planned they were all just little inflections by like the um by the players themselves like to kind of put a little bit of themselves into the song and it yeah. all still ended up being so me so had we not do that and had COVID not been happening, 
I would have made everybody get together. You know, we would have started in the morning. We would have played the song together all day in studio. We would have went to lunch. We would have came back. We would have finished. And I definitely feel like I missed that. I miss not getting to go to lunch with everybody. I miss not getting mm. to meet everybody. Um, but at the same time, I do feel like they would have done more what I was asking them to do instead of putting their own stuff into it. So that was a crazy opportunity for me. Um, and like I said, the only connection I've had with these, these people since then is, um, I've been modem. That's it. Yeah. You know, but otherwise we would have spent a whole day together. But with that said, like so many other things were, were came out of it. So I think you're absolutely right. I think that COVID just makes us do things differently and therefore different things happen than what would have. Totally. And what about co-writing? Have you been doing much co-writing? No. I can't really get into the Zoom rights very much. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm sitting here at home, like hearing my laundry go off or like hearing my dogs need to go outside and I'm just like not there. But I have spent some time by myself writing during this time, which I don't do a lot. I mean, once I found co-writing, I was like, man, why would you do this by yourself? Like, why would you do so? Getting to write alone during COVID again was kind of cool. Um, a lot of just moody stuff. Like I wrote this song called Pretty Sad just moody stuff that <laughs> like no one really needed to hear. I just needed to get it out. And that was never so know. Cool. Somebody <laughs> probably does somewhere. Somebody, <laughs> somebody needs to hear a pretty sad song. Yeah. I know. You I know like things so weird because like you, everyone has like a different view on it. Like, like we, we've obviously like in terms of how we speak to artists and like, you know, we were doing a lot of phoners and things initially, but no one's coming over here. You know, we could, and even if they were, we couldn't sit in the same room as anybody. So we're doing a lot more through Zoom, a lot more over the phone. And some people are saying, so, oh, I'm loving doing Zoom rights. So I do like one a day, every day. And it's brilliant. And like I spoke to Noah Schnacki and he's like, I love Zoom rights. They're amazing. And then kind of two weeks later, I spoke to like Olivia Lane. It's like, yeah, they're not really for me. I'm a people person. I like to pick up the vibe in the room. So it, it does seem to be like a really sort of, you know, yeah your perspective yeah it's completely different because like you said you don't have to drive to murfreesboro and nashville and you know some people come to nashville to write from alabama and just different places you know all around so like you're saying yeah tons of opportunities to write with people in different states you never had before without having to leave um but i definitely missed um i missed being with people but i feel like if i would have really did it I would 100% got something out of it. Yeah. I just didn't do it. Um, but it's it's been really interesting in that sense. And um, Jamie and Miss Lorena, where are you guys at? Where am I? I'm in yeah. South London. So I'm, okay. in, I'm in Croydon. Okay. Yeah, so I, I live in a little town called Royston, which is probably about 30 miles north of London. Okay, very cool. Well, so I'm like north and south of London. London. Yeah, exactly. Opposite sides. Yeah. Very cool. I can't remember where I was at. I know that like we used King's College in London. Oh, King's oh, College. King's College so nice. But I can't remember where my I can't remember where the flats were. But um, that's I can't near, remember where like, the King's Co uh, King's College, like the Student Union. That's near Temple, kind of in that yeah. part of London, like on the you know on the bank. Um, so I went there and oddly enough that we're having this right now I know I feel like we I, I probably just bundle up everything except the U.S. you know like in a flawed way but um, I'm supposed to be in Sweden right now oh, if it wasn't goodness. because of COVID yeah and so COVID is honestly as much as I've wanted to keep that mentality of I could be Zoom writing with people in the UK and that kind of things and like doing that stuff I've just been mad that I'm still here and didn't get to go to Sweden have you have you actually got any shows on the cards? I like I know it's it's a really weird question to ask people, like in terms of stuff going. That means I've shows scheduled. Your whole, you know, diary been wiped out. Oh, um, pretty much. So we were supposed to be gone every single weekend through um, late November, um, starting in uh, the first week of uh, April, and um, now I have a show on July eighteenth. Oh, so you've got, you've got something on the cards, which is kind of a lot more than kind of what we have. Um, yeah. We're still going to be quite a long way. Like we mentioned July 4th as well. We might sort of see pubs open again and things. Right. Um, right. Well, and so my show is at a bar. So yeah. if you guys open on July 4th, it would be like going in on July 18th and playing a set, which is still amazing, right? Getting to play music for people is always amazing. 
Um, yeah. But we were just lucky enough and unlucky enough this year to like get, um, we signed with a booking agency for the first time. So we had a lot of like opening spots and a lot of festivals and a lot of um, just big stage, like um, big crowd things as far as like those festivals pull so many people. Um, and so we were lucky enough to, to be on that side of it, but just unlucky enough to be on the issue where those are all of the dates that will just be moved to 2021. Yeah. You know, they won't be revisited in August or anything like that. So with that said, next year is looking amazing. Yeah. which is reassuring and like good because all those festivals just rebooked, but at the same time, this year looks absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Like Pat, Patty, have we had any other new state side about kind of like any sort of like festival or gig changes or how people's tour plans are? Um, well, one, the biggest news that I've heard um, just recently, um, yesterday as a matter of fact, uh, the Charlie Daniels Volunteer Jam, which is a huge, uh, big deal around here, um, is held at Bridgestone Arena every year, was originally scheduled for September 15th of 2020. Uh, the rescheduled date now is February 22nd of 2021, and three additional acts were added. Uh, um, 38 Special is one of them, um, and, and it's going to be uh, good to know that that's gonna continue and it's going to happen. That's got a whole laundry list of acts that are on that bill so the fact that that was rescheduled and it's not too far out we're not talking about next summer it's it's february right. so summers go by real quick so and did they say are they running them any kind of like any kind of different ways you know like like will like is covid making a lasting impact on these festivals in the sense of maybe there won't be like um like a pit or anything like that you know uh, they haven't said anything like that so like that. i think okay. I think so far it's going to go, it's, it sounds like it's just going to go off as a normal, yeah. normal, normal Charlie Daniels volunteer jam. Yeah. Bring your hand sanitizer. Yeah. For sure. That's right. Bring your hand sanitizer, bring your, <laughs> bring your wipes, bring your whatever you want to bring, but February it's looking good. So yeah. that's, that's a big one. So we're excited we're, to hear we're that. We're obviously quite a, you know, a bit away from that in terms of things are like our entire this whole year has been wiped. We've seen every festival gone, cancelled, postponed. Luckily, um, most of them have retained lineups until next year. Um, but I would think that those festivals at the start of next year may not look the same, particularly our biggest country festival we have over here. So it remains to kind of be seen about what happens with C to C come up. We know our headliners. And we know a date, um, but kind of beyond that, it'll be interesting to kind of see what happens. Yeah. Um, we're still sort of at a stage of like, I say, July 4th is a date. We're hoping to have venues open in some capacity, but I don't think we're going to be seeing live music as quickly as you guys are over there. Um, one thing we have got is, you know, one of our iconic venues, the Royal Albert Hall, uh, they're putting on a lot of live shows and stuff, and they've always been really good in supporting country music over here. We've seen Casey Musgrave sell out. We've seen Little Big Town. We've seen Darius Rucker, you know, people playing shows there. And in combination with Nashville Meets London, which is, you know, one of the best weekends of the summer over here. We have a great festival in Canary Wharf, which is absolutely free to the public, entice a lot of people in. And unfortunately that's not able to take place this year. So they've partnered with the Royal Albert Hall and they're putting on an event, which is going to be on July 18th, which was interesting, the date that Ali randomly picked out when we were kind of talk when she was talking before, uh, where the Cadillac Free, Michael Ray, uh, one of the finest artists in the UK, 20, uh, along with Tennille Towns, are going to be playing that show. It's going to be broadcast live on the Royal Albert Hall YouTube channel at 7.30 our time. So that's 1.30? Yeah. Central. Yay! Yay! Hey, I, can't out, I can't figure out the time that Alabama's on here, so I'm so impressed that you were able to do that. No, I, I've been quite good. It's like I, was, I was doing a phone with someone this week, and their agent, their promoter, was giving me times in Central. And it's kind of like, no, in Eastern. And it was just messing me up so much. It's like, Great, I don't yeah. quite know. It's like, I know when normally, like, national promoters say it's like 1.30. It's like, that's half seven at night. It's fine. It's awesome. 
they're like 2.30 Eastern and you're like, um, um, I'm in <laughs> What's Just right? add one, add one, add one. <laughs> and then you get back. So yeah, that sounds really weird. Um, there have been some, some really interesting things though, like with COVID has introduced, um, a new kind of concert, um, like here in the States, at least in the sense of, um, my dad and, you know, you can Google him, whatever, you'll figure it out real quick, but, um, the, he's doing shows at drive-ins. That you know? is, I'm, so, I'm well, excited that's about that. Really interesting thing. I do think though, a lot of people don't understand it because I've had so many people message me and go, Hey, when your dad comes to Tifton to play at our drive-in, <laughs> are you coming? <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's not how that works. No, <laughs> that's, no, it's yeah. not how it works. So, so I think that's one interesting thing that's came out of COVID. And dad was talking about this really interesting thing because I'd asked him, I said, well, you're such a performer, you know, uh, what's it going to be like for you guys to do like the live thing, you know, and like do it, but not have an audience there. Like, will you bring in like a, you know, a, a, a small audience just to feed your performance or like, what are you going to do? And he said that they will put, or they've talked about, doing like a, a 360 camera kind of thing to where like when you're at the drive-in and a big light lights up, you guys can like honk your horns and like flash your lights and like do whatever you would do with the song and dad will be able to see that. So he'll be like, he'll have a screen that just flips through all of the different drive-ins that are- That's really cool. So you can That's see it. Cool. And, and this was when he was just talking about me with plans. So like this might not be a real thing. It might not be whatever, but these are the kind of things that are being talked about here to make concerts work. Um, I, I like that idea. I, I, so I think that's happen, a really interesting good. one. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it'll kind of bring a new life to the drive-ins too, because they're just not used here like they used to be. And I still think they're the coolest things, but like we have one in Tulsa back in Oklahoma and um, they, they're constantly trying to find like new things to do to bring people in. Yeah. And I, and I was actually shocked when I looked down the list of where they were all being held and how many drive-ins there really are still that are in existence. There's so many, yeah. There's so yeah, many. So I was kind of thrilled about that. So I, yeah, I do hope, like you're, like you said, I hope that that maybe, you know, shoots a little bit of life into those. Yeah, I think that'd be cool. I think you should classic do American thing, I think, to us Brits, the drive-ins, just such a classic American thing. But actually, hearing you talk as you well, guys have one like at all. They're, they're they're allowed, but nobody does. Yeah. Them. Yeah, I think a little bit of drive-in cinema is starting to happen because of the current situation. Yeah. But I think, like, just as you were talking, I was thinking one of the, maybe, one of maybe the kind of silver lining for the, for the music industry that's come of all of this is people who wouldn't ordinarily be able to go to concerts because they can't afford them or there's some reason they just can't get there, have suddenly had all this live music to watch online. And it, uh, for some people, they're discovering artists and discovering acts that they would ordinarily never have come into contact with. So I think that is probably one really good thing that's come out that's, of it. Yeah, and that's such a beautiful thing to see. I mean, my sister has always worked with um, like special education and those kind of things. And there's so many um, kids, you know, with Down syndrome and autism that that is their one thing they link to most is music. And they can't be in a crowd. They can't be in that sense overloaded situation you would be in a concert and now you can go and you can take your kids to a drive-in where like you know you're safe you know they're in your car you know that if anyone comes up it'll be like curbside you know like concessions or something so yeah. I feel oh, like it's, it's really that's opening that's like situations for people that couldn't do it because I we have a lot of family that's disabled too and they just like they don't want to deal with the hassle of trying to get into it and going through the crowd and and so you're right, it really does open it for, for a lot more people, which is really exciting and what music should be anyway. So that's really cool. Yeah. How we'd sort of come into that when we were talking about kind of that Royal Albert Hall show, it's like, you know, we mentioned that Tennille Towns is one of the people playing and obviously she's got her new album coming out next week. Mm -hmm. which we're going to have a lot. The Lemonade, Lemonade Stand. The Lemonade, Lemonade Stand. stand. I've, I've had it and been listening to it for the last two weeks. So it was the Rose to, the Lemonade Stand, like the EP, and then the Lemonade Stand is the album? Yeah, it was the Road to the Lemonade Stand was the EP, and the gotcha. Lemonade Stand is the album. I love her It's stuff. amazing. Like, if you, anyone that has not listened to Neil, like, she is one of the nicest human beings you will ever meet. Like, genuinely. She, she opened so her sweet. And when you watch her on stage and when you listen to her, she really does have something that is so special. And like I said, she's such a lovely person. You know, she's from, you know, she's from Canada and she does a lot of work, you know, with 
children, like with a charity. She has a charity that she's been heavily involved with that I think she's a patron of they're called Big Hearts for Big Kids, where she's run a benefit each year back at home. But obviously due to COVID, where she's in Nashville, it can't quite happen. Right. So this year she's doing it at the Ryman and it's going to be streamed live, mm -hmm. like through all social platforms and through uh, Bobby Bones, one of Bobby Bones' social channels as well, yeah. where she's got, you know, some of some really, really big hitters that are coming on. Dirk Bentley, who she's been on the road with, and we talked a lot about when I last hung out with her. Brandy Carlisle, Andy Grammer, uh, Mickey Guyton, Kaylee Hammock, Ashley McBride, who I don't think we've talked about enough already tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I may have mentioned. Yeah, I love really. Kaylee Hammock though too. I'm a huge Kaylee Hammock. I was so lucky that Kaylee was due to play at C to C, and I got to see like an industry showcase that she did, but she didn't actually get to play to the general public. So I was so lucky and to be in a room of about 25 people. She's amazing. I just love her socials. Like I've never got to meet her or anything. I've got to see her perform once. She performed at I think the ACM Honors or something last year, um, and she paid tribute to somebody. She did a cover, and it was phenomenal. Um, but I love her and I love to kneel. She caught me with the Jersey on a wall song a couple of years ago when my yeah. friend passed away and it just, it just moves you, you know, it's so special. That, um, is such, that that's song great. like about loss that helps you. That's really special. I think so. Oh. I, I'm such a fan of to I think she's amazing. And as well on that bill, uh, you've got Laurie McKenna, Chrissy Metz, John Osborne, uh, and doing it for the UK are our very own Lucy Silvers, who, oh my God, like when I still talk about Lucy, I normally kind of like just cannot. I, I, I am such a big Lucy fan. I'm such a big Lucy fan I for a long a time. I Lucy. Oh, Lucy is just so Lucy. What's, what's Lucy? Who's Lucy? Lucy Silvis is married to John Osborne. Osborne. Okay. Is, but that's, that's, really immaterial because Lucy yeah. is just oh go just go listen to her after this you'll just right. you'll oh yeah, right. yeah serious like she's she's kind of like someone that's been writing with like Tennille and Kieran Donovan and people like that for quite a while I can't wait. You know, I love that. You know, she's absolutely, absolutely fabulous amazing. I first saw her at a round with Travis Meadows and uh Tyler Bryant from the Shakedown at Douglas Corner like oh wow six, five six years ago and I went I don't know who you are, but I think you're my girl crush and, and I'm a fan girl. And I, I just, I was instantly just absolutely enamored with her music. I always, I always find with her that when I'm talking to some Americans and I'm not used to, I sort of default, like subconsciously default to doing her accent, which is kind of this sort of half British, half American sort of softening off words. <laughs> <laughs> it's only when I listen to that, it's like, why am I trying to sound like Lucy Silvers? Um, I love but like, that. She, she's amazing. Like, I, I first saw her on Top of the Pops, which Lorna will kind of realise just by the fact of Top of the Pops, how long ago that would be. Um, oh, yeah. she, she, had a, she had a couple of pop hits back over here before she kind of moved over to the States. Um, and so, yeah, no, we're all massive fans, like Annette and kind of Leslie and Amy and everyone else that's involved with TC. You know, we've been fans of her for a long time. And the other person, the final person we forgot to mention in regards to the Benefit concert is Luke Combs, who has once again reclaimed the number one spot on the country albums uh, through the Billboard charts, replacing Jimmy Buffett from last week. Um, Bye. We're kind of getting bored. Not, I would say no. We're not getting bored of saying. So we're we're really pleased to kind of say that Marin Morris is still number one on the uh, Hot Country songs it's for the unreal. Uh, for the fifteenth week running. Which are, as well, it's the twelfth consecutive week, which is the record for a solo female taking what was Taylor previously. Which it shouldn't be news that you know we've had something like that, but. You know, it kind of is. And then as well, on the radio airplay side, the radio airplay, as we hinted last week, Carly Pierce and Lee Bryce have jumped to number one, replacing Travis Denning on both of those. So we, we've got two girls 
two two of the three are, we've got female artists and um who knew yeah, it should be news, but it also should be a huge freaking deal like that oh, yeah. exactly you know like i get oh, was weird and it's so exciting to see it especially it as like, as an as just someone who's just starting like just dip her toes into it just to see that women can do it that's why i've always been such a fan of ashley you know oh, yeah. she came in with tattoos and age and maybe some different preferences and just still did it you know and, and yeah. did it her way and i love that i love seeing women do that kind of stuff me so cool. too yeah and and I, I not for nothing but I, I when we talked to you at uh, crs and you showed us your tattoos and i went this girl's got some pretty cool ink um and i know another one who has some pretty cool ink and who's kind of a badass and who's really talented and you know i think that there's there's room for this now i think i think she kind of broke down a door and, and I think I, she did and I think she broke down the door and she made like kind of that sacrifice to do it because if Ashley wanted to be huge 15 years ago she could have been yeah right but you she I mean? just so held her did ground she did it the way she did it now I feel like I can do it the way I'm gonna do it exactly and I that love is her so cool. I love that's her. so cool but we we've seen some other women this year we talked about Marin and we talked about Carly but we've also seen Ingrid Andress have a number one song this year yes and as well i'm pretty sure we've somehow mentioned her every week we've it's such a music. story song too nonetheless it wasn't the song that everybody yeah it wasn't another girl song that we expected um not to put girls in the category they're always in but i the more hearts than mine is a really cool song to have gone as big as it did you know that's really special too is like the content that ingrid was pushing is awesome yeah and Another lady that had a number one, I can't remember if it was just before or just after. I can't remember which came first, but um, another song that is so badass, like pure sassy in every way. Um, Gabby Barrett, uh, I hope went to number one. It is still the number one on the billboard for the country streaming songs. So what that's saying is that is the song that people are playing most on YouTube, are listening to most on Spotify, on kind of, you know, Apple Music, on Deezer and things like that. She dropped her debut album today, a long time coming. Uh, so Goldmine came out today. Um, anyone had a chance to listen to it yet? I haven't yet, but can we talk about Give Me Jesus? <gasps> can we? Oh we my God. Let's, you start. Go for it. I don't even know what to say, but can we just talk about it? What yeah. a cool song. And I didn't know who Shane and Shane was. So like to see her name next to her, some of my friends were immediately like, what in the hell is this? She just put out it like, you know, the badass sassy cheating song. What yeah. is this Shane and Shane? And I was like, I don't know what that means. It looks like a duet. Let's listen to it. It's a great song. So it's a cool. It's so, so cool. cool. Especially to have put that out afterwards, you know, like yeah. it just it just seems so natural. You know what I mean? It didn't seem like she was trying to do any kind of thing or prove any kind of way or like move her back. It just seemed so natural. It was just like here's a badass song, here's another badass song. And I thought it was so cool how she did that. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that everything about that album is I don't know, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be making any predictions or anything, but I really think that she kind of came, she didn't come out of nowhere, obviously, because she came out of reality TV, yeah. more or less, but yeah. she, um, there's another girl that came out of reality TV and did pretty well, um, and you, I just- This is exactly why I, ca I started writing review of this album today, and I know exactly where you're going because this and, and was so kind of, I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm just going to yeah. leave it there. We, we were talking in March because obviously a lot of people covering in the UK were due to have some press time with Gabby. And it's like when C2C got pulled, we'd all sort of said after it's like, we, are ne we were due to speak to her. We are never going to. She is going to be so huge by the time this album drops. And when it sort of come out, it's like, yeah, 
we were also right. You, you kind of listen through it and stuff. And it's like, you know, the two singles that came out at the start, you know, they're great. They're so powerful songs, you know, where you've got the good ones and you've got, I hope, obviously being that massive number one. You know, there's so much on there, like Jesus and my mama listening to that. That is an opener for a set list to get the whole crowd going, which yeah, is yeah. absolutely perfect. Um, I love Hall of Fame. Um, I think it's a really good idea in terms of, you know, the idea of, you know, past relationships that are still special. And I think uh, Rose Needs a Jack could be another number one. I love that one. I do. I thought that one was clever. I mean, you know, it gets a little bit of name drop in there. And, yeah. you know, that, that was cool. Yeah. I think she just, she just totally nails that kind of like big, epic sounding kind of anthemic song and she, she's just absolutely brilliant but I think what she does really well on this album is she's obviously she's obviously a crossover artist and there is stuff that is much more at the kind of pop R&B end but there's stuff that's at the country end as well and she there's just something for everybody on that album and I think you're, I think you're right about the American Idol thing for me I listened to this album I just thought that's sort of going well I did that but now here's me and here's my career and you just you just really want to champion her I think this is going to do really well for her exactly anything else this week anything else new that people listen to oh um you know we were we kind of glossed over um you know our little fun night the other night at the local but um there was a uh, another big artist there uh that played and was uh socializing as well um william michael morgan That's played really. and played his new song which just dropped uh it's a cover of the old charlie rich uh song behind closed doors and it's an acoustic uh version with just some piano and he played that the other night and it was absolutely wonderful um he's just got such a great classic country voice it's absolutely you can't miss it out of a crowd of you could have a hundred different male country voices and you cannot miss his um and he did an outstanding job live i can tell you right now that um, when I listen to the recorded version, just as good. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, they are both good, whether you hear them live or, or whether you hear the recorded version. Um, and we might maybe be talking to him sometime soon. Willie maybe. is phenomenal. I think I was the only person at the local that was hearing that song for the first time. Really? Yes, because he started the intro lick and it was like, it, my, my little brother and I were sitting there kind of looking around because it was almost like everybody in that room kind of went like, oh, like they all went somewhere, you know, like they all mentally just like went back to something, right? I don't know what memories they were thinking of, but everybody left for a minute and me and my brother were just sitting there like, this is a really pretty song. Like, but we don't know it. Because, yeah, I didn't know Well, it. that's, that's where you have youth on your side and, and where I was a little bit yeah, jealous, but. Yeah, but didn't he do a lovely job on it, though? Phenomenal job. Willie honestly can sing anything. I mean, he's so Yeah, he, he really can. can. He's one of those sing-the-phone-book guys. Yeah, but I thought he was phenomenal. I thought he did yeah. really great. And to hear him sing vinyl again live was always, is always just a little Oh, yeah. Oh, it, unbelievable. And he, um, he, I think, you know, let's just drop it down. Let's just do it. He's our guest next week here on Talk. Go so, so tune in, Allie. I will. Yeah, I'll wave to him, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah. you, you know, I think what we should start next week, you know, we've been trying to look for like a weekly feature. I think William Michael Morgan would be the perfect person to start. What is your best Gary Quinn memory? Which are Oh, kind of okay. Gary. Well, we could. Uh, we, we better fill Allie in. Gary Quinn is a, do you know Gary Quinn, Allie? Gary, Gary Quinn is a, um, what, probably the biggest male artist in terms of like solo country performers over here, you know, he's, you know, hangs around with, you know, he's got some friends in low places too in Nashville, let's be honest, but, um, you know, <laughs> like um, good one. you know, he, with uh, Christy Osmondson, John Stone, the guys from American Young, um, Glenn and Sarah Bath, uh, Royal South, uh, Lewis Bryce and kind of a lot of sort of people that run that. And he also is heavily involved with a large festival over here that takes place in sort of 
just before CMA does, which okay. we'd love to have you over to come and do. And I think you'd be a great fit for. So we can, uh, if you fancy, we can put a shout out to Carl. Um, but Gary's, he's sort of like a legend on the UK sort of scene. And um, he's an incredibly talented artist. Um, I think everybody froze on me. No, yeah. I, I wasn't sure. It's like, I was kind of like, oh, but you're back. Kind of like it's stop. All good. It was kind of like stop <laughs> and time and like <laughs> for no reason. Um, but anyway, anything else? What else is anyone listening to? Any new, new stuff out today? Lorna, what uh, there's, there's one. There's one other new thing that I've got. Um, uh, we do our merch Mondays on Mondays uh, where yeah. an artist brings out their merch in their online store and partners up with us and gives a great discount to all our followers and this Monday coming up it's going to be uh, Paul Bogart if you're a fan of traditional country this guy is your guy um, along with William Michael Morgan um, kind of in that same lane uh, Paul Bogart just dropped a new single today and it is called and I gotta look down because I'm going to mess up the first word I always do it's a brand new song it's when she gets a hold on you I keep wanting to say, if she gets a hold on you, it's when she gets a hold on you. And I listened to it a couple times. It's a really nice song. And I do remember this about it. The One of the co-writers is Nicole Witt from, from Farewell Angelina. And Nicole Witt is a brilliant writer. Um, and she's just, she's a great artist in her own right. So um, yeah, give that a listen and uh, stay tuned for Monday where you get all the details on the 10% discount in uh, Paul Bogart's online store. So yeah. that's it. That's yeah. all I got. And I, um, I definitely want to give a shout out to um, the new Josh Turner and Chris Jansen track, Country State of Mind, that's out today. They are, they're amazing on it. It's the title track from uh, Josh's new album, which is due out on the 21st of August. And some of you will know this track straight away because it was originally recorded by Hank Williams Jr., of course, back in, I think, somewhere 1986. I am, I'm, I'd like to say I'm too young to remember that. I'm almost too young to remember that. Right. <laughs> and so it's a really, really classic uh, country song. And um, the way those guys have done it, it's a little bit more upbeat than the original, um, but it's still pretty, pretty close to, pretty close to it. I think what's really nice about it is you can really hear in Josh's voice the influence of, um, of, of Hank Williams Jr. And, and he's spoken about that influence before. And so there's this really kind of nice sense of passing down one song from one generation and to another, which is really lovely. Josh Turner's album, uh, when it is due out, is going to be packed with collaborations and some interesting covers on there. And I'm sure, I'm sure we'll end up chatting about that in a couple of months' time. Yeah. And Josh was obviously someone that toured the UK last year when he played the Long Road Festival up in Lutterworth, when he headlined the, the show up there, which was amazing. Such a great festival. And obviously, we kind of stressed before, we're kind of gutted we're not going to get events like that. But somebody else that kind of toured over here last year that's brought out new music today is my good buddy Tyler Rich. Um, feels like home. I am just going to say this right now. That song is going to be huge. That is going to be played on the radio for the next four months because your radio system over there works so different to how it does over here. And it's going to be played and played and played. That is a song that makes you, if you did not need to want to go out to a bar and have a good night, this is the song that you need. Uh, it's a song that he wrote with uh, John Knight and Andrew De Roberts, and trust me, it's an absolute banger. Um, and like I say, it's you're going to hear a lot of that. Like you really are going to hear a lot. Well, he's a hot commodity, just as it is. So. I, th I think you're probably right on that, Jamie. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'd put money on it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not just that. It's, it's just such a great song. When you sort of hear this, it's like, you know, it's the sort of thing, it's like, I don't just want to put that on shuffle. I want to keep playing and keep playing and keep playing because it's such a great track. And another new track out today that I absolutely love, uh, Nikita Carmen, who, if you're not familiar with, who is an Australian uh, that is now living in Nashville, um, she's got her new track out today, Better, uh, which was uh, produced by Walker Hayes. Uh, it's so slick what this is. It's, it might not be everyone's perception of 
country. You know, I kind of hear a lot of like Julia Michaels or kind of Anne Marie in terms of kind of the sound and the influence of the track. But her vocal is so smooth. Like she has one of the nicest voices you'll hear. There's a lot of kind of, you know, that whole sort of Daniel Bradbury smoothness coming through a track. And when you bring it to is them this together. Better? Yeah. Better. Cool. I'll check yeah. it out. I love Julia Michaels and anybody you can put oh, like a little I'm, country I'm, Julia I'm, su I'm such a huge Julia Michaels fan, like massively like when I was last over in the States last year in Nashville and like, I went and saw Jaden, her sister, for the first time, just purely because it's like I'm such a huge fan of Julia. It's like you must be good. And yeah. like Jaden's voice like blows me away and like, you know, Superwoman like that new track she just put out as well. That is just wow. I love that mind-blowing um and then on top of that in terms of other new music um we've also had a couple of new other new tracks and stuff we talked about josh turner and chris jansen <clears throat> a new track out today from uh, emma jane white and ali mentioned that you know she put a track out a couple of weeks ago and stuff as well and we talked about that we're going to have new music from Neil next week and there's kind of a lot more on the horizon kind of as things kind of being pushed forward as we've already been teased. I think a lot of really cool music is going to come out of yeah. that You know, I we now finally have a, a date for a Gaslighter as well, which is the Dixie Chicks album, which is coming mm -hmm. out in July the 17th. I can't it's wait. very, very, very exciting. I can't wait. I didn't understand what Gaslighter was. Like, I didn't know what that term was. No. So the, so it took me a, a several several listens to, like really dive in have you ever point. seen the movie gaslight uh -uh. oh what well, it's an old movie but look it up okay all right great great oh, old movie yeah. oh, oh my gosh this stuff over here to look up came from. um but i but just the sound was phenomenal you know of gaslight yeah. like just as soon as you heard it i loved it i was like i don't oh, know yeah. what this is about but i love this song and then i really <laughs> got into it and as patty said that next week we're going to be back with our good friend william michael morgan going to talk to us. Who knows exactly what's going to happen there. We might talk about buckle and boots. We're going to talk about kind of a lot of other sort of stuff and kind of what's going on going forward. But uh, for now, it's, it's always been fun. You know, it's, it's great to hear what's going on. Kind of fact, you know, we're very jealous you can go out and see shows and, you know, Ali's able to kind of get out and play. Um, and, you know, we hope to be there at some point. And we, you know, we'd love to have people be able to come back over here. It's probably not going to be any time soon. Um, but for now, Ali, can you play us out? Have you got a song for us? I would love to. I would love to. And I, I really do just, I want you guys to know, like, our hearts are with you guys. I can't imagine. I was, I lost it for a little bit in, in quarantine. I think we all did. Yeah. And it was honestly, as today's as good as a day as it is because I got to sing last night. So I just like, we're wishing good wishes for you guys, and, and I hope it comes back around. But for now, I hope you enjoy Zoom music, because I think that's what you'll have for a little bit. Um, but I wrote this song uh, this week. Um, I wrote it two days ago with my buddy Eric, and um, it's just been something that I've wanted to write for a long time. Um, nothing crazy, nothing you probably never thought of before, but it's just a sweet little, sweet little song. It's called Don't Give Your Heart to a Cowboy. Here's it. Mm -hmm. Ever since the wind came rolling in from the east To a one-horse town, spurs on the ground, silver screens From that first tip of a hat, girls like me got it back And that grit drives you wild, he'll rope you with this smile and better than I wish I knew Not all dreams come true And yeah, he'll spin you around that sawdust floor And yeah, he'll hold your hand out those double doors He smells sweet like a winter green With lips that taste like a whiskey And he'll leave his leaving boots on your front porch so don't give your heart to a 
cowboy. Oh, I must have fell asleep because I've never seen the bitter end. That sunset slow, those credits roll without a warning. I guess I always thought that he'd be coming back. He wouldn't leave her all alone. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah, he'll spin you around that sawdust floor. And yeah, he'll hold your hand out those double doors. He smells sweet like a wintergreen, with lips that taste like a whiskey. And he'll leave his leaving boots on your front porch. So don't give your heart to a cowboy. Oh. And I might have bought a ticket once or twice. But this shit is real life And yeah He spun me around that sawdust floor And yeah He held my hand out those double doors He smelled sweet like a wintergreen He lived a taste like whiskey And he left his leaving boots on my front porch So don't give your don't give your heart to a cowboy. I wish I never gave this heart to a cowboy. Thank you, guys. Unmute it. We had the same issue last week. Go in there. Can we open it? I love that song. Thank you. Yeah, I love that too. That was so cool. And I love the ending where I wish I'd never give my heart to a cowboy. It was so cool. Thank you. But anyway, so this wraps up uh, season one, episode four of Talking Country. Uh, like Patty said, we'll be back next week uh, with William Michael Morgan. Um, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're so grateful for Ali for joining us tonight. Um, it's it's been wild, you know. We we're so chaotic in terms of what we're doing. We don't have a set time of how long we're trying to run for. It's like you know, if it works and we go, it goes. And you know, we could be here all night. Perfect. Someone wants to talk That's to exactly us. Exactly how my sets go, honestly. No, we no, we like it. No, we we. we love if we have a fun guest, what are we to do? We, we're going to have fun. Exactly. You know, like, you know, the thing comes, it's like, you know, it's like if we have a, like a boring guest, like we're only on for like 10 minutes and it's like we're done. So. I know. Well, good. Good. well I'm glad, I'm glad we, we made it. You know, I'm glad we were on here for a while. It was good. Yeah, the fun meter was like on high right now. So what are we going to do? Yeah. Well, I love what you guys are doing and thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you for yeah, coming. Thank you for coming. Enjoyed... We appreciate it a lot. It's been really cool to hang out. It has. And next time, maybe it'll be in real life. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. All right. See Bye. you later. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. bye guys. And.